2030 Strategy Plan 2020-2030 sets out a strategy to achieve Institute Sukhanagara ISN vision to see a bright future for our Malaysian athletes to be on the Olympic podium. At ISN, we provide a world-leading high-performance sports support system dedicated to uncompromising culture of excellence to Malaysian athletes, enable them to perform to their full potential and continue to make Malaysia proud. Perform, the Center for Sports Knowledge and Innovation. Perform is the innovation and knowledge sharing platform for Malaysian sports. Produce and share knowledge. Exchange ideas with the most brilliant minds in the region to develop cutting-edge applied research projects. Our mission is to share this knowledge with the next generation of sports professionals. Fit Malaysia X is a scientific-based module created by ISN specialists specifically targets to reduce weight and body fat percentage run by certified and dedicated trainers from Team ISM. We aim to transform lives in all aspects such as health, nutrition, mental and physical fitness among employees and general population. Women can coach. We educate, support and develop women coaches. We foster and cultivate a diverse and inclusive community where the voice of women coaches is stronger together. Hi, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all of you. Welcome to our AKK webinar series 13. My name is Afzan Mahadi, Head of uh, Coaching Expertise, Academy Kejurat Yang Kebangsaan, National Sports Institute of Malaysia. Welcome back, welcome back everybody. Uh, welcome back to our talk and share shiri, uh, series, uh, series 13 on the uh, coaching uh, the parent strategies for creating a positive uh, coach parent relationship uh, thank you and welcome to all the icce members to the uh, coaches teachers um, parents uh, all um, uh, a, a team from outside, uh, from the uh, Majlis Sukarnegara, Majlis Sukarnegri, National Sport Institute, and for all local and global viewers of the AKK. Thank you for being um, part of the loyal uh, followers for the uh, Academy Kejuratihan Kebangsaan uh, Talk and Share series. Uh, today, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to share with you the um, uh, what so-called part of the title of the uh, webinar today is uh, on the coaching the parents and how and what the strategies for uh, to for us to creating a positive coach parents uh, relationship. All right, uh, we go for the uh, uh, to to the uh, slide. All right. Uh, Today's generation of uh, sports parents, who actually a sports parents today compared the uh, sports parents uh, uh, 20 or 30 years ago. Today's generation of parents are different from the parents in the past. Now, it is more common for parents to have a large role in their child sports than in the past generation. So today's parents are often referred to as being like over-involved, 
or overprotective in um, uh, things like uh, related to the uh, uh, child involvement in sports. Uh, today's parents are often referred to as being over-involved and over-protective, having high expectation, constantly putting pressure on their child to perform and acting as a parent coach. So this is very dangerous uh, issue that, that uh, I think uh, everybody should think of. And this role can be led by parents to act inappropriately at their uh, child sports event and there are countless examples of this in uh, the uh, news, such as a high school referee arguing parents to cool it down or making mandatory um, on the um, absence of the um, like um, mandatory in terms of uh, stay aside in order for them to be a good um, uh, spectators during the event. So uh, parents today put important on being deeply involved in their child athletics development and have a need to protect them for the failure. So um, when, when we discuss about this uh, element, parents actually scared to look or to have the uh, child uh, to follow or to uh, meaning that like uh, protect them from the failure. Um, for me, as a coach, as the um, uh, team organizer and so on, I love to have the uh, uh, a development of the right or wrong, meaning that a failure or successful of the uh, young athletes because from that uh, failure or a successful of young athletes actually can enhance uh, their performance in terms of corrective the uh, body uh, movement or corrective of the uh, skill that, that, that they're supposed to have. So, but a part of the um, uh, element that I mentioned just now related to the negative uh, impact or negative feedback or negative element that happened to the uh, parents, there is a positive engagement of the uh, parent, uh, sports parenting has been occurred a long, long way uh, during the uh, sports parenting process. For example, like um, a certain parents love to have like a focus on the process of improvement of their child ability, of their child skill movement and so on. And sometimes uh, parents love to buy in the uh, philosophy of coach, meaning that, uh, for example, like uh, every coaches, they do have their own uh, philosophy, they create their own philosophy. So sometimes uh, parents uh, may use that philosophy uh, to mirror the uh, coach um, uh, behavior towards their child and um, react positively to their child regardless of the outcome, meaning that whatever things that their child doing in a positive way, in a, in a very uh, um, a control uh, behavior, uh, which is a uh, parents react positively. If anything goes wrong, then the parents should um, um, educate their kids to be uh, in, a, in a better a value better or, or, or have a very positive value uh, in terms of behavior. And of course, um, our parents actually have a positive role model or in terms of attitude, effort, uh, looking forward to have or to encourage their athletes or their child to be part of the uh, one team uh, environment. So that is um, actually pro and cons. Um, what the uh, uh, today's parents' uh, behavior uh, towards their child. Why? Okay. Um, who's actually the parents? The parents actually uh, a mirror uh, for the uh, young kids who are age uh, one to six years old because during that time, the uh, development of the uh, development of the behavior of young kids actually a uh, mirror uh, the behavior of the uh, uh, parents itself. So, for example, like uh, parents as a role model for young kids. If you, your parents or you as a parents 
uh, do not know how to control your emotion, for example. So uh, athletes or young uh, child might be uh, mirror your behavior to be like you uh, when they are growing older later on. So uh, during this uh, period, parents should um, control your behavior from negative to positive. For example, the uh, behavior like a negative behavior, uh, parents who actually uh, smoke, um, do not smoke in front of your uh, young, uh, young kids because uh, sometimes young kids tend to follow their uh, dad, for example, to get a cigarette and try to put it into their mouth and just to show that this is what my parent did during a daytime. So that one is a really bad influence. Um, of course, I cannot control the parents or coach or whoever who are smoking to stop smoking, but at least not to show to them that uh, to young kids that you are smoking in front of them. So it, this is a really bad attitude, which is uh, can be a copy paste by uh, young kids uh, during the training or during the uh, day, day time. The emotion, the second one is uh, emotion. Uh, as a parents, you need to control your emotion. You need to you need to manage your emotion when you're dealing with your young kids during the uh, training uh, training program or the uh, competition and so on. Why? Um, Sometimes uh, young kids or athletes may feel uh, a little bit uh, frustrated or enjoy or happy when they are win or they lose. So you need to be with them, no matter that they are win or they are lose uh, during the uh, competition. Losing is not the uh, failure for me. Losing is part of the education, that uh, a learning curve, learning process uh, for young kids uh, to be able uh, to counter back their, their uh, uh, bad performance later on or to correct way of uh, doing a physical uh, movement in terms of uh, a skill element and everything. So uh, as a parents, we need to control our emotion towards young kids, control their win, whether they are winning or they are losing in certain this one, give a good reward to them that this is not everything, all right? Uh, the third one actually is a fun and enjoyment experiences that uh, young kids have. So normally as a, as a parents, you should uh, really take into consideration, ask them, ask your young kids, how do you feel after you competing uh, all uh, competition? Uh, is that you feel happy or if you are at bench area as uh, an athlete, so what do you what actually your contribution towards your team is that you be a good supporter during that time or maybe you can be a, a good um, 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 a, a player who actually encourage your team to be a one of the uh, um, um, what we call a, a, a power powerful or spirits into in the teamwork. And then uh, the third one, the fourth one is a child development knowledge. As a parent, you should know the growth and maturation, maturity of your young kids is that they are um, already in the um, a level that uh, a very sensitive is that uh, the, the growth uh, like uh, girls who are uh, facing the puberty at age 11, 12, something like that, their, their body become a little bit bigger compared than before because of the fat increase and so on. So as a parents, you should know the um, uh, physiological and uh, psychological um, uh, changes uh, during the um, puberty, uh, puberty of your, your kids, right? So this is a basic four element. As a parent, you should know, you should contribute towards your kids. You should know what actually kids feel, is that they are so bored, is that they are, they are facing um, uh, a fatigue, uh, over fatigue in terms of doing physical activity or they are burnt out to a certain level. All right, uh, I would like to share with you guys uh, on the child development at a very young age. For example, like uh, 
uh, on my uh, left uh, side uh, age uh, four to six year, uh, months uh, all months actually have to time wait from a first born so if they are born um, three kilos they might uh, come into nine kilos uh, seven to nine kilos during the uh, age of uh, four to six old months. For the 12 months, three times weight from firstborn and height become 50% higher than the firstborn, taller. Uh, the, the third one is one to two years or additional 2.2 kilos gram and a yearly uh, in between 2.2 uh, to 2.2. Uh, five something like that during the age of two to five years old. This is uh, uh, been uh, there. There are uh, actually this is a part of the research has been done, and the uh, you we should understand that sometimes you feel like you cannot control your kids who are age uh, three, four, something like that because during that time is uh, the time for them to exploring the space, the time for them to get to know what's this and what's that. But uh, the four elements that I mentioned earlier is uh, related to the nutritional factor and the motor skill development that that been polished by parents itself. For the uh, those who are aged three to six years old, their weight plus minus one point eight to two point two five kilos increase yearly, and height plus minus uh, five to seven point five centimeters yearly. But this one more or less more to the uh, Asian uh, country. But for those who are in the uh, European country, the research has been done. Uh, the average around 10 centimeters, something like, because they are related to the gene of their family, the family background and so on. But uh, uh, the last one actually, uh, second last actually uh, related to the uh, vision. Uh, 20 out of 20 for four years old. And then, of course, in uh, everything that we did for the uh, human development, child development, uh, for the child development, they are really, uh, they inquired at least uh, sleep between uh, 11 to 13 hours uh, per night. So that is why we need to look after their uh, uh, sleep or recovery for their body. All right, we go for the next sharing. Okay, coaching strategies to use when you working with parents. What are the uh, coaching strategies that you uh, uh, really need um, in order for you to uh, dealing with the uh, uh, parents? The first one uh, I shared here is uh, teach parents about the sports. Help parents develop an understanding and appreciation of these sports, including rules, skill, and strategies during the sports. So, as a coach, you need to answer questions, refer parents to the resources that will help them learn more about the sports. But as a parents, uh, we cannot uh, overdo when the coach actually teach your talk to you about the. Uh, uh, skill and everything. So, in order for you to counter back the uh, parents' involvement in a very high element, we need to develop a code of conduct for parents. I will show to you guys later on a few um, uh, examples on the uh, code of conduct for parents that um, be, can be used at your club level, at your school level, states level, or, or whichever level that related with you. So, uh, a coaching uh, department or coaching um, a group should develop a code of conduct for parents. Do and don'ts what they uh, as a parent should do and can't do or can't really interfere during the uh, uh, training competition or a day after competition and so on. All right. Um, so, develop rules for parents' conduct at competition and event and share the rules with parents at start, uh, uh, start of the season. Some example rules are, uh, are to not interfere, as I mentioned, are to not interfere with, with the coach to express encouragement and support. Do not shout criticism and do not make abuse comment to others. So, everybody should be respected 
in, in this category area. Uh, the third one established two ways communication with parents, which is as a coach, uh, cultivate two ways communication by being open to what parents have to say, and try to be defense, uh, try to not to be defensive, just open up to the uh, discussion. Let parents know the appropriate time and place for discussion. If a parent is aggressively communicating, try using a mediator. Uh, such as uh, an athletic director, such as a head coach, uh, such, uh, such as um, maybe you may use other parents or other coaches to be uh, in the middle middleman in order for you to communicate. But the middleman must be neutral, which is not um, a hundred percent agree with you, then then not hundred uh, percent agree with the parents. Uh, continue with the fourth one, educate parents on the positive parenting behavior. How do we educate, educate them? Let parents know the negative consequences of their action and show them a positive influence they can have on their child development. What are the elements? So the parents should um, discuss with a coach or uh, whichever expertise that related to the, uh, the child development. Also share your process as a coach and encourage parents to reinforce the same skill uh, you work with your, uh, your athletes or your young athletes. For example, like um, independence and being prepared for practice, being prepared for the competition, being prepared with the uh, environment uh, during the uh, uh, training regime. And the last one, of course, hold a parent meeting at start of the year, right? Um, at, at this meeting, share the detail of logistic of the season, this, the uh, coach uh, rules and responsibility, appropriate parenting rules and behavior, and also highlight the importance of healthy parent-coach relationship. Try to encourage open discussion at this meeting by directing questions at parents and allowing parents to ask questions. So you cannot say that uh, you the only coach who can share whatever things that you're supposed to share with your parents, but allowing parents to share their opinion about the, um, their child. And in fact, if the parents have the uh, more knowledge, they may suggest something for the, uh, um, uh, for the uh, team goodness or the uh, betterment of the performance for young, uh, young, young athlete. So you may want to hold quarterly meeting as well as base on the length of your season. So normally, before you start the um, a certain uh, training session, you may assess their performance in terms of physical attribute. For example, um, uh, for your sports, really need uh, uh, um, um, element on the endurance level, element on the speed, and human and the uh, on the flexibility, but your A athletes unable to achieve um, A standard for the uh, 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 fitness component that, that, that I refer with just now. So you may share the information with parents because sometimes parents get active themselves without involving young athletes. So this is the time parents encourage uh, their own mural in terms of uh, doing physical activity, doing the uh, fitness activity with their child. And um, this actually may help, uh, may assist a coach in order to accomplish a level or target uh, in the uh, fitness level for their uh, particular young uh, team coach. So to create the best relationship with parents, coaches, parents, Coaches should focus on collaborating, being transparent, transparent and understand parents' expectation. So the, the, the three elements that, that I mentioned just now actually can conclude on the what are actually the strategy, the best strategy for you besides you educate the parents in terms of uh, knowing the, the sport itself, but you need to have two ways, communication, uh, collaborating, being transparent with what 
uh, uh, problem or whatever uh, things that you are facing on and understand the parent expectation. And as a parent, you cannot easily say that uh, today you are you sending your, your young athletes or young kids in this A club, then you expect them within six months they will win in this competition and that competition. Cannot. Why? You should... Um, understand or you should be knowledgeable in terms of um, uh, the lifespan of the athletes, the periodization up and down, what actually loading that you should be in or, 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 or not, something like that. So uh, the, the, the three elements, collaborating, uh, being transparent and also understanding your parent expectation actually can calculate uh, uh, cultivate all the uh, element on the coaching uh, strategy uh, uh, for us to use when working with parents. Okay, parent greatest strength and weakness for children in sports activity. Why? Because parents actually a referral, a guider, a positive, um, uh, a positive. Uh, mirror of a positive monument for athletes to be in a good situation or bad situation. So as a parents, um, we should um, understand uh, the uh, strength and uh, a weakness of your uh, athletes actually of your uh, young, young kids actually came from you itself. So a parents, I'm, I'm referring parents as, as parents, both uh, father and mother. Sometimes only father look after in terms of uh, child development, but sometimes even only mother look on the child development. So both parties should take a consideration, should take a responsibility on the, um, uh, what they call, uh, a parents uh, or the... Uh, Improvement of the uh, your your child um, a, a child growth and maturity or child uh, in sports. It is not easy task to be a parent of young athletes. That's the one that uh, I can uh, consider. Yes, it is not that easy. Hard enough uh, are the task of helping uh, the uh, children learn how to handle up and down of competition. But perhaps most challenges are uh, the demand of your own coping skill, learning how to manage emotion, and that repeatedly tested under trying conditions. So as a parent, your experience a rush of positive emotion when your child deflecting sand, emp uh, emptiness when they are loose, and um, you know, a child feel uncomfortable, so you are the one that child will uh, comfort themselves into a certain level. So uh, these emotion uh, processes can almost become addicting. Instead of focusing on the child goals, you can get caught up in seeking more experiences where you can feel the rush of positive emotion. So you can begin to focus on your own fantasies for your own children or child. Fantasies of success, fantasies, fame and recognition. Recognition like um, uh, you need to be, oh, this is the best athletes for this group. So you dream uh, towards that. But a common problem is that you love your child may lead you to believe behave in a way that ultimately hurt the child development. This is very important. Or hurt their relationship with you. So uh, the paradox of being parents, a, a parents is that the good reason we have to pushing our children to succeed can at the same time lead to behavior that teach our young children to be selfish to be a grasping instead. So as a parent, greater strength, their unwavering, 
unwavering emotional support of their child and their willingness to make sacrifice for their child athletics advancements. So that is uh, also their greater witnesses. So as a parents, back to the uh, a key point that I mentioned just now, referral, guider, making a positive way in a greater strength and weakness for your children in sports activities. Do not push your, F, your uh, kids to get involved with sports. Do not push, but push them to get involved with physical activity. From physical activity actually can encourage them to play more sport and uh, at the same time can develop sport sampling at early age. They can play whatever sports they, they, want, that they want to play. Then after a certain time of uh, life, lifespan that they are contribute, a uh, coach may say that I would like to choose your child to be part of my football soccer team or a uh, football team uh, at the age of 12 years old. Why? Because I saw the kids of yours is a skillful. Why skillful? Because you develop the motor, motor learning skill, you develop the locomotor skill, you develop the stability, the flexibility element, and then you conclude the manipulative movement skill in all elements at one time. That actually can say that in a coaches, uh, in a young coaches athlete saying that I might choose your uh, young athletes. So uh, this is very important uh, as uh, parents uh, and uh, of course a, a coach uh, most of the year coaching are uh, watching uh, parents who uh, uh, have uh, their, their uh, kids who are able to perform in a very good uh, foundation level. Okay, what are the parents threat that we can uh, discuss today. I have four parents trap. When you overdo a certain level, uh, you may uh, face this type of uh, parents trap. The first one, unfortunately, parents get caught in this trap um, all the time. Uh, it shows that itself as following like over identification. Uh, yeah, like uh, you naturally identify uh, identify with your child, but over identification may lead you to ignoring your child's feeling and focusing instead of your own. So, who actually want to be a sports uh, sports athletes? You yourself or your young kids? So, you actually should allow young kids independently choose what they feel or what they like into a uh, world of sports. So, as a co as a parents, you cannot over identification of your uh, young kids. The second one, selfish dreaming. It is normal as parents to dream your child future. Uh, you dream about something that your child can get or reward that you can get. Like, uh, for example, in Malaysia, we have Nicole David, Datuk Nicole David, we have Datuk Lee Chong Wei. So everybody dreaming, like, I want to have one good child, like Datuk Nicole David, who can uh, get more money from playing sport and so on. But uh, don't you feel about your kids feeling about it is that your kids want to be a high performance athletes or they just want to get active in a certain level or in certain initial level of involvement so here again we need to love we need to have the sport sampling sport sampling meaning that allow them to play whatever sports that they like to play they love to play so um Sometimes parents get so attached to their own dreams and they and of course that they lose sight and what the child uh, the your child wants. So this is very important. Do not uh, interfere your child feeling. Uh, you may guide them, but not to say that this is a push a stop button for them. Okay. Okay, the third one is confusing investment with a sacrifice. Like as a parent, you love your children so much that you are willing to make tremendous sacrifice of your of their behalf. 
of their behalf. Spending money to support the child's sports and making and taking the, uh, the time to be there for your child, but parents may come to see this as sacrifice as investments and then expect that the investment will pay off and yeah and the get the benefit from that. So you cannot say whatever you spend then need to get back uh, later on. So uh, at, at here, the parent trap is a confusing investment uh, with a sacrifice, uh, this one. All right. Competing with other people, others are parents, sorry. You want your child to excel, but it's easy to get caught up in the competing with other parents. Pushing your child to succeed and hoping that uh, the other children we feel giving your child a chance to sign that is a very bad uh, behavior supposedly as a, a coach um, no matter that uh, your child or your teammate of your child or might be the opposition uh, a team uh, did a good job you should give a reward in terms of reward not to say in, in a material but a reward in a say of a uh, uh, give a big clap, give like an encouragement because this is in order for us to develop a, a community who have a, a very high skill in, in a certain level of a sports involvement. All right, here I'll share with you guys on the uh, an example of the code of conduct uh, for sports parent uh, should f uh, should f uh, in uh, every um, what they call it uh, organization school level and so on. All right, I have a quite if I'm not mistaken, I have around 12, 12 uh, different type of uh, code behavior. The first one, uh, as a parent, I always show a positive role model to children and teammates of your children. Uh, the second one, I will not. I will not for my children to participate in, I will not force, I'm so sorry, there's a wrong spelling there. I will not force my children to participate in uh, sports, but force them to get active first. The third one, I will remember that children participate to have fun and the games is for youth, not for adults. I will learn the rules and games and the uh, policy of the sports. This is a part of the criteria that I mentioned just now, how to uh, uh, create the um, uh, strategies uh, when working with uh, sports parents. And the fifth one, I will encourage a good sports sportsmanship by demonstrating positive support for all players, coaches, officials at every games, practices, or other sports e uh, uh, youth sports event. This is includes your team, your child team, and plus your opposition child team, whenever they did good job, just give a big clap because this is a part encouragement. We are adult enough to monitor or to uh, to control the environment, sport ecosystem to be more enjoyable. And the uh, sixth one is uh, I will place the emotional and physical well-being of my child ahead of my desire, my personal desire to win. Seven, I will insist that my child play in safe and healthy environment. My child here uh, referring with a teammate and might be related to the opposition uh, parties. For example, you have a situation like uh, um, not in a good weather, you have suddenly a scene like a thunder. Uh, around a side of your uh, field, which is no other official, no other coaches uh, saw that. So you may um, um, tell them about the situation and hope the official team will uh, stop uh, playing because of the thunder, of the heavy rain and so on. So I will require that my child coach be trained in the responsibility of being a youth sports coach and that the coach upholds the coach's code of behavior. Of course, uh, you cannot uh, ask uh, your coach who don't have, um, uh, what they call it, uh, don't have the uh, parents, uh, sorry, you don't have the uh, coach's code of ethics. 
all right because the coach's code of ethics actually can uh, guide you in certain uh, level uh, nine one is uh, i will support coaches and official working with my child in order to encourage a positive and enjoyable experience for all the e, 10 i will demand a sports environment of my child that free from drug tobacco and alcohol and will refrain from their use all youth sport event this is related to anti-doping and everything no this is a very bad behavior but uh, uh, we 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 under 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 uh, uh, control of that. The eleven, I will help my children enjoy and youth uh, the youth sports experience by doing whatever I can, such as being respectful, fan assisting with uh, coaching or providing transportation for the team. Uh, then the last one, I will ask my children to treat other players, coaches, fan officials with a respect or regardless of race sex, creed, or ability. And finally, I realized that if I violate this code of conduct, I may be subject of to the disciplinary action that, count, that could include one or more, but not limited to the following. For example, like verbal warning by head coach, written warning, or parental season suspension. So this is a... Uh, uh, like an example code of conduct that that may that can be a uh, follow at your club uh, uh, signing below the, the parents guardian agrees to abide this one but sometimes um per, uh, coach actually encourage to advise parents to have uh, the child insurance for their self it is a uh, good uh, for the uh, if anything goes wrong uh, the the uh, personal insurance may may recover uh, everything, All right? Okay. So we go for the next slide. So parent sports, parenting and sports. Uh, the um, research has been done in a certain level on the parenting and sport. Parenting and sports, uh, uh, according to research that uh, I learned, uh, I read uh, through, there is three ways of um, um, uh, child involvement in sports, in three ways. As a provider, parenting as a provider, as a role model and interpreter. What is provider? Provider refer to the parents who are responsible on the signing them up to the program transporting them, encourage them, paying the registration fee or do whatever things that related to the physical preparation for the uh, athletes. The role model itself, like attitude of the parents taking part in sports behavior of modeling. So as a parent, they're controlling their attitude, taking part in sports, meaning that uh, beside the uh, training program that been uh, developed by or been implemented by um, uh, coaches, um, as a coach, uh, uh, sorry, as a parent, you also need to do um, like extra an assignment uh, for the uh, young athletes to be uh, follow you as a role model, taking part in sports, uh, allowing your, um, I can consider like 70% um, uh, of the interest of young athletes actually came from the behavior of the uh, um, uh, parents itself. Uh, beside the 30% because of gadget and everything. So behavior of modeling, uh, you are as a model, role model for your young kids or young, uh, you as a guardian to look after your young kids, to be, uh, let them hunger with a physical activity or sports instead of their hunger to have a, a, a mountain of rice for lunch. For example, so that is a part of the role model. So role model only not only involved in physical, but is is involved uh, with uh, psychological and involved with uh, eating habit. I love to share with the uh, eating habit. Uh, the more you eat, the more you add your your kids love. You love to eat ice cream. Normally, your kids hundred percent love uh, to eat ice cream. But when you eat ice cream or you eat more uh, a sweet um, 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 
um, like uh, sweet uh, ice cream or sweet uh, things that, that you love to have, you might uh, uh, spend your energy expenditure equivalent to what the uh, um, um, nutritional intake that you uh, uh, intake just now. So must be balanced uh, uh, the uh, nutritional intake equivalent to energy expenditure over there. As the uh, interpreter, um, parenting in, and sports actually contribute on the communicating belief, a value, uh, the performance itself. Uh, parents' belief can influence their children, evaluate their own performance, the value of winning, and the uh, importance of participating in sports important of the uh, participating in uh, uh, physical activities such as. So that is a uh, uh, three element that related to parenting uh, and sports. All right, we go for the uh, sports parenting factor that uh, uh, involve on the uh, athletes, on the young kids, on the parents, on the, uh, the coach itself. What actually element that, that required on the uh, uh, parent uh, the sports parenting uh, point. Parenting uh, support from uh, parents actually uh, has been defined as children' perception of their uh, parents' behavior aimed at facilitating their involvement and participation in sports. So parents can provide children with the uh, tangible support, for example, like financial assistance, uh, informational uh, support like a feedback after game and also emotional support like comfort after uh, a, a loss of the uh, games. So such as parent uh, support has been associated uh, with a positive outcome of the uh, children. For example, parental support is one of the main sources of enjoyment for child athletes and can positively influence children' perceived competence, confidence, coping skill, intrinsic motivation, and to remain involved in sport. That's the most important part because everything is all about enjoyment. They're joyful when they are having or they are looking forward to be a part of the physical activity or sports. The parental uh, pressure also involved with the uh, parental uh, behavior that perceived by children as indicating high, unlikely, or possibly even unattainable uh, expectation. Like parental pressure can include parent over emphasize winning, uh, then uh, providing uh, criti criticism, uh, very negative criticism, over uh, emphasizing winning, and of course, uh, at the same time, can lower self confidence uh, among children, among uh, the, the the team members, and so on. The parental stressor actually involving the uh, scare or um, anxiety uh, during the sport competition among parent uh, group. Uh, anxiety uh, from the financial element and of course the good relationship between uh, coach and F, uh, and the uh, parents uh, play essential role here. Alright, uh, we continue with uh, those who are in a parent coach. This is very difficult. As a parent, as a coach of your child or of your athletes, you must know the role between uh, parents and coach. The parents are different role and the coach are different role. No matter that you are a parent coach during that time. You need to treat them as a fairness element here because other eye and body will look at you saying that you as a parent coach, you are biased to your young child. Why? Because young child not up into the standard, but um, uh, you allowing your young child to be a part of the uh, team members during the uh, competition, for example. But the opposite way will may happen to the child athlete's performance. The child athlete's performance may uh, 
I can I can share with like if you have your own child with you, the child will be a little bit stressful to show to everybody that they are better than others because they don't want to say that you are being chosen in this sports because of your mom or your dad, of uh, to be a part of the coach in your team. So this is a stressful element that been occur among child athletes who are having a parent coach at the same a team. And uh, the fifth one is uh, parents' behavior during competition. Of course, uh, parent behavior during competition. Uh, parents need to be silent and not and do not interfere during the competition. Hopefully, you not you are not going to sit behind your kids at a bench or uh, at your competition area. You need to support the team, not only your child. You need to support the team. You need to give a team a reward. A reward. Like I did mention earlier, a reward of if you want to give a one um, a present to your kids, make sure that don't share your present in front of other athletes. Why? Because we do not know the social um, social uh, background of your uh, team members, athletes of your child. Might be they they came from the poor family. Might be they came from the uh, a middle family or the rich family. So if you want to buy something for your kids, make sure that you buy for the rest of your uh, athletes team. Or otherwise, you may give something to your kids outside from the uh, uh, competition area. And of course, as a as a parents, you need to aware on changes of physiologies like overuse injuries, burnout. Um, burnout and then uh, they feel like a uh, drop out and everything you need to be aware how are you going to be aware on these uh, injuries of non uh, of the and uh, burnout then you need to refer with a, a certain level of knowledge on the overuse or overuse injuries or burnout during the session all right uh, we continue with the uh, abuse a sign. All right, this is very important um, for us to uh, have a look on the abuse sign. Like, for example, as a parents, you need to aware on abuse factor. Sometimes your kids won't go to the uh, training program because they feel fear, they feel so uh, tension, stress, and everything. So you need to check. You need to be a spy to check whether is that because of your ch your child attitude or might be because the environment of the uh, training uh, session that they have. Is that abuse from the coaches, abuse from the officers who are uh, handling the team? And you need to spotting and stopping this situation uh, to continue because if not, going to be a part of your child um, abuse they may abuse your child they then they may abuse other child in your uh, team uh, of your uh, child team and of course uh, as the sexual harassment issue um, we need to check on the chaperon uh, on the sexual harassment issue for example like if you have a one um, uh, a man coach, you need to have one a team manager from a different gender, a woman, because sometimes it might be uh, difficult for the uh, um, a man coach uh, are going to handle a young girl's athletes, right? That is a part of the code of conduct on the uh, sexual harassment uh, element. A children preference for the parental involvement, like parents preparing on the physical preparation, like equipment, drink before the training regime, before the competition, and so on. But during competition, children wanted parents to show respect to the opponent, officials, to the uh, coaches, to the uh, whoever in in their field, right? So as a parents, you need to be aware that we need to respect everybody. Parental style. Of course, uh, parental star referring on the effective communication, role model with a positive behavior. And of course, as a parents, we need to allow autonomy supportive, allowing um, their children or your children to feel their, 
that they have a control over their behavior, support their children to be responsible towards their own action and try let them independently handle it, uh, the uh, problem solving or whatever in a very um, uh, in a very good way. But if you found something wrong happen, you may guide them in, in, in a, a solving uh, in a good way of uh, problem solving. Parent as a scientist. Who said parents do not do not know anything? No. As a parent, you are scientists. You are the ambassador for your own way. For example, nutritional supplement. Uh, when, whenever nutritional supplement that you provide this you need to check on the is that the the nutritional supplement that you you share or you give to your own child related to the ban um, uh, ban um, substance from anti-doping world anti-doping agency because um, uh, one of my friends, good friends uh, from a dietitian and nutritional uh, element uh, on the institute did mention to me, for those who are 18 and below, they're not really required to have um, supplement uh, from the um, um, whatever uh, extra supplement, but they may have their own primary supplement from their food intake that they have. So do not to worry if you don't have money to buy uh, like uh, um, multivitamin and so on because the multivitamin, the vitamin C and everything came from your food intake, uh, daily food intake that you take every day. And then uh, parent scientists, you need to aware again on the child physiological development physical and mental uh, this may occur like uh, during puberty uh, the the changes of the uh, body development on the physiological development physical and the mental uh, development uh, during during that, that time and then the last one i did mention uh, previously on my first slide second slide third slide on the parental track so everything you did from the number one to number nine you need to be made sure that as a parents a parental track uh, actually can change uh, your positive to a negative because you are doing in a over in everything over dreaming over identification confusion confusion in certain investment that you have then of course the negative part is a competing with other parents all right that is a part of the uh, sports parenting uh, uh, point okay we get we go to the tips for these sports parents as a sports parent, you need to check on the safe sports guideline. You need you know everything about your sports. You need to check on the safe sports guideline. Try to avoid uh, overuse injuries. Back to the uh, knowledge that I did mention just now. Get to know with others who are actually expert in that particular overuse uh, injuries. Keep uh, an eye out of burnout. Burnout is actually occur when uh, the um, uh, fatigue. Uh, uh, we have a heavy fatigue uh, for the, your your own child. A continuous fatigue. There is no improvement at all in terms of physical attributes on their training program. No focus. Not everything might be because they are too bored with the uh, training regime that been developed by coach. That uh, there is no um, innovation happen. Uh, during the uh, training program, there is no reward, there is no enjoyment, there is no joyful during the training because uh, when you're dealing for uh, young kids as a parents, you're dealing with the enjoyment. Allow them to enjoy, to cycling, to do a jogging, to do whatever things that you're supposed to do as a as a athletes or young child in that particular motor development and then watch for sign of disorder eating sometimes they feel uh, do, do not uh, i mean like don't like to continue or don't like to eat at all you need to feed them and uh, sometimes they love to eat a uh, fast food it's not really encourageable uh, you need to control you need to check um, do 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 they have a uh, dream do they drink um, 
uh, fresh mark daily. Uh, that's everything that that you you need to check. Is that you take uh, extra sugar in in your food or your drink or something like that? Okay. E uh, actually, if injured, see a doctor. This is the best part. If you are injured, if your athletes or your young kids injured, see a, a doctor because the doctor is expert. But you need to know the basic uh, prevention of the uh, when you. Uh, swollen, your athlete swollen, your kids swollen, what you're supposed to do, use eyes, 20 minutes and so, so on. Continues with uh, consider going to the uh, an orthopedic clinic if you cannot uh, handle, is that because uh, they're, they're swollen because of uh, injuries of the tissue or injuries of the bones. So that is why you need to refer to the orthopedic clinic. Be prepared. Be prepared as a parent. You need to be prepared in terms of a training regime, competition, uh, whatever things, if they are uh, start uh, in a sports for the early early age sports, for, for example, like uh, rhythmic, uh, gymnastic and so on, they may need have like a control test for your athletes to upgrade. In a taekwondo, they have a like a white belt, uh, yellow belt, black belt, I do not know, whatever belt that they have, that is a control test. So as a coach, you need to be prepared. As a parent, you need to be prepared on the uh, preparation uh, for the um, competition or uh, certain assessment for your young kids. Uh, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated related to the uh, 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 water intake um, is that they have uh, whatever sweat they're uh, coming out from their body actually equivalent or more that uh, you replace it with the uh, uh, drink or sometimes they don't love to have a drink uh, direct drink like a plain drink uh, sometimes you may have like a, a watermelon without sugar uh, that is part of the drink that 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 consider can be replaced but uh, of course uh, back to uh, need to refer to the nutritional uh, team to, to advise more on the hydration level and then of course before and after competition or after training learn to stretch well a uh, flexibility uh, actually the um, causes part of the uh, cause of the injuries among young athletes, among young uh, initial group, because they love to run, they love to cycling, they love to play football, but they don't love how they not being um, uh, educated to do a, a, a basic stretching, a basic dynamic stretching, basic warm up, what they're supposed to do, and uh, in terms of a heart rate itself, what uh, numbers of heart rate do do, do you parents know about the calculation of the uh, um, a, a training heart rate and so on for your young kids and for yourself too. So that is a part of the um, learn to stretch well, learn to have the a basic knowledge on the sport science and sport racing uh, element. And I assume this is my second last uh, slide on the how to be a good sports parents. Sport parents actually is a role model. Role model need to get active. You want your child to be independent. You yourself need to be independent. You want yourself, your, your child to be active in sport. You yourself need to be active and get active in sports, equivalent to your ability. The second one, encourage activity for kids, not specific sports. Encourage activity for kids, allow them to sampling the sports. Sports sampling, allow them to play whatever sports because every single sport have a different type of uh, um, what we call uh, physical uh, skill attributes. So the more skill that you have, the higher or the broader uh, identification towards sports that may uh, allowing your child to be uh, take part with. And then a separate identity from sports. Separate identity from sports. Uh, sport is sports. Identity is identity of your uh, behavior. So, but uh, identity actually can uh, sports identity can influence your own identity during the uh, daytime. So that is why from sports we can easily develop discipline, value of your uh, life, value of your young kids, and so on. Kids playing sports should focus on the moment. So every kids or uh, whoever playing sport during that time don't uh, mess out their thinking about exam, about whatever thing. 
if if they are playing sport then they are playing sport at the moment and uh, as a as a parents you need to have constructive criticism it's not only for your kids but for others too uh, sports parents help coaches if you are good sports parent you help coaches in terms of what in terms of a pattern of your uh, children at the uh, at home is that equivalent to pattern when they behave in front of the coach so you need to be uh, you need to gather with uh, uh, at the same time with the coach to uh, fine tune how to improve the for example like behavior of your your child uh, to be a better person later on because coach are not doing this only for sport coach doing this for life or the attitude to groom your young kids to be a better man or better woman later on children learn self control when sports parents display self control when sports parents actually uh, have a temper a behavior and actually they can influence your young kids too so children learn self control when sports parents display self control so this is look like a mirror of what are you doing being a being a good sports parent means cheering for everyone so you cannot be selfish to say that you only have your daughter or your son uh, in a very a performance compared and others who are very poor uh, very bad uh, performance so as a sports parent you need to be a part of the whole group uh, be aware on the uh, a note of anti bullying uh, bullying is happen is not only during uh, uh, among sibling among uh, teammates but it might uh, happen between uh, athletes and coaches too so be aware on that practice positive sports parenting this is the the most important part everything that i mentioned just now about the uh, sports parenting you need to practice keep practice not only uh, uh, talking but you need to walking the talk you need to walking the talk do something good for your this one all right <clears throat> I think this is my last. A picture is worth a thousand words. Let them play as a parents. The power and joy, mindful sports parenting. So I think this is my last uh, slide that uh, I can contribute for about one hour and five minutes from, uh, from now. So I really enjoyed sharing my uh, sports parenting uh coaching the parents strategies for creating a positive uh, coach parent relationship i really hope for parents who have a problem with the uh, uh, coach may uh, improve may reconstruct again and also it goes to the same to the uh, sports coaches who are actually facing a problem with the uh, uh, sports parent should reconstruct again your relationship Okay, uh, is there any, anything that uh, I can, uh, is there any Q&A? All right. Okay, I go, I saw a few questions. That, uh, admin can, can share with me any, any question that related? All right, how to, uh, from Nazarildo A. Muhammad, thank you uh, for asking one question. How to control and being nice to the parents that experience more than the coach of that sports? All right, this, is, this question actually related to the um, uh, parents that experience more than the coach. So that's why as a, as a coach, you need to be a friend with a parents first. Uh, why you think that parents they, uh, they have the more experience than you because might be they are involved more in uh, that particular sport. That's number one. Number two, you as a coach need to upgrade your uh, coaching level. And sometimes being a friend with the parents actually can gain a more 
a confident you as a coach in order to answer whatever question that uh, occur during your 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 training session or your quarterly meeting with them. So that is why I encourage every coaches to have a parent coach uh, relationship by doing like a regular meeting with the uh, coach because um, sometimes uh, sorry with the uh, parents sometimes parents may not experience in certain level but they do not know the uh, level of their child because you are doing the uh, coaching with your child right nazarildo i hope that answer your question is there any question other than that okay the second one uh, how if uh, parents do not take any action uh, related to upgrading their uh, sports equipment uh, that involve okay um, uh, sports equipment uh, relate to the uh, I, I do not know uh, what what type of sport equipment but um, of course uh, this is back uh, how to take action of course we need to have like a meeting with them to discuss with them because you may um, uh, call them then saying that like for example like racket sports you need to upgrade your racket sport otherwise your performance of your young kids performance cannot be enhanced by doing like a second smash third smash or otherwise because of the uh, I do not know uh, details on that on the technical part but uh, you need to see and to discuss with them uh, put in certain level if you use uh, continuous two years same sport, sport equipment meaning that there is no enhancement in, the, in terms of performance later on so you need to discuss with the coach in terms of that so you might, may plot the plot number one uh, sport equipment only a maximum uh, two uh, two years after two years uh, because every time they they smash uh, the uh, shutter cock cannot go to the uh, certain level of whatever whatever uh, degree and so on so this is uh, may influence their performance itself for example that's that's that my 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 answer all right other other than that might be one or two uh, all right. The exploring different type of sports a uh, uh, very important part for young kids. Of course, this is what we call sports sampling. Why a sports sampling? Uh, during age of, um, for example, you started your young athletes or young kids uh, of seven years old to play a basic initial level in um, like a racket sport. But during that time, uh, you cannot specialize them. So you need to sample them in different type of sports. So every kid in Malaysia, I love to hear that every kid need to know how to uh, kick the ball because every, every uh, the uh, soccer is a popular sport in Malaysia. Every kid need to know a basic movement of running because running without running, you cannot go to any other sports. Every kid need to know how to swim because uh, part of the swimming is a multilateral movement of your body skill and so on. So the sports element, the sports sampling in that particular sports actually can narrow down the um, extra ordinary or extra specialization of your young kids when they are growing older. Meaning that they have hundred over type of skills sports skill rather than they only on, only know how to play football football only involving a uh, lower body part upper body part a little bit on the uh, movement of running and so on but if they're playing like uh, handball they're playing like uh, in fact uh, men nowadays playing uh, netball they're playing handball netball basketball they play hockey they're playing uh, whatever uh, artistic sports because a two element here, if you are playing, but, uh, sorry, athletics, uh, athletics, gymnastic, and you know swimming, you complete all three elements on the locomotor skill, stability, and manipulative movement skill. The three elements over here actually help you to transfer or to whatever sports they love to play later on, easily for them. Okay, that is a part of the uh, why a sport sampling, uh, sampling 
uh, very important in a very uh, young kids, a young age. Okay, might be the last question. Anything from the last question before we conclude? Is there any other last question? Uh, all right, I, I can see the Samsul Akmar. Uh, maybe can click there. Samsul Akmar. Uh, can you give a tip that uh, how to support my son or my daughter? Uh, to encourage them to love sports because their parents love love sports. Okay, uh, how are you going to start with the uh, love of sports? The number one is uh, allow them to love physical activity first before they go into the sports that 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 you love them to um uh, get involved with. Allow them to play at the uh, grassroots level, allow them to play at the uh, a park, allow them to uh, play mini sports before you allow them to play football, netball, basketball or whatever things, rugby or whatever things. You start with the physical attribute first. You start with, you know what the Sukaneka? Sukaneka actually involving enjoyment. Sometimes young athletes, young uh, young kids don't love to play sport because they feel so tired. Why so tired? Because there is no enjoyment, no fun element there. So sometimes you may use music. Sometimes you may use modified uh, games. You use uh, ula hoop. You use a foam ball that uh, is not hurt your 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 kids when you throw the ball but they love to have like a, a competition in between like they are among their sibling uh, ask them to run or ask them to do zigzag in order for them to get a one big ball that is a reward for them so young athletes love reward love enjoyment love fun they love things uh, training regime that have without thinking about tiredness without thinking about fatigue that they may occur after this. So that is why during our time, those days, we love to play poison ball. We love to, to play, um, what else? Um, I can't remember. Uh, uh, musang, dan, uh, musang dan ayam, something like that. We never know inside the uh, the uh, mini games that that uh, been developed, those they actually have an element of speed have the element of the agility, have the element of coordination, alert. That, but the most important part in that particular um, element of uh, mini, mini sports, actually uh, enjoyment besides the element that, that I did mention just now. So that is a part of a uh, uh, sharing that, that I can share with you guys today. I really hope that you enjoy your time with me and um, I hope we are going to meet again uh, next week with uh, another topic. Um, thank you so much uh, being um, a loyal um, spectators, a loyal uh, viewers for the AKK um, Talk and Share uh, webinar. And thank you being a part of my fan uh, along the way uh, during my session. Then uh, I really hope a lot more that I can uh, share with you guys later on, not only in uh, Malaysia but uh, involving other country like our neighborhood country, Philippines, Indonesia, and also the uh, Europe country who actually contribute a lot on the uh, sharing the uh, uh, knowledge. Then uh, hope uh, you enjoy watching with the uh, AKK Talk and Share Series 13 today. Thank you so much. Bye.